Good morning. We are heading to Fort Lauderdale for the World Poker Tour tournaments. They have a 3500, a 5K, a 25K, and um, a 2K. So four tournaments, I think. Maybe there's one or two that I'm forgetting. Um, over the course of about a week, so it should be a lot of fun, a lot of good poker action. I haven't played poker in about six weeks, which is a long time. I've been studying a lot, though. I spent basically the last two weeks watching and talking to everyone I could about everything that's going on, and I, I feel pretty good about my general strategy, so that's good. Um, I'm excited to get in there and play, although it is always a little bit unnerving whenever you have not played in a while and you sit down and like, oh, this is new, but at the same time, it's like, oh, this is familiar, this is home. So, looking forward to getting into the action. $2,000 tournament went quite rough. I busted on the first hand on my first bullet. Um, I had king, nine of diamonds. Board came, uh, I, I, what happened? Kevin Stamen, good loose aggressive player, raised from middle position or something like that. I called big blind, king, nine of diamonds. It came, jack, eight, seven, two diamonds. I checked, he bet the flop, I check raised, he re-raised. And at this point, with our um, 75 big blind stacks, we have like half our stack each end. Turns a nine, so I paired the board. It went check, check. River was the eight of diamonds. I checked, he went all in, I called my flush, and he had jack eight for a full house. It's actually a pretty tough spot. I was, I'm not even no, sure if I'm supposed to call on the river when I river the flush when the board pairs like that. But Kevin's a good loose aggressive player, so we make the call. Um, then I bought in again, and I kind of won a bunch of small pots. I dirtled around from 15,000 up to 30,000. And then from there, I lost every flip. I lost four flips in a row, four for four. Um, and every time I lost a flip, I would grind it back up. Lose a flip, grind it up, lose a flip, grind it up. I did that over and over and over. Um, but they got me on the last one, lost the last flip. So now I'm gonna go relax and play the World Poker Tour event tomorrow. It's a $3,500 Essentially unlimited re-entry. Hopefully, it's only one entry for me. Today is the main event. We're going to table six. Let's see who we're looking at. This is table one, I think. So we're back here. We can't film in this room. All right. Table five, table six. Here we go. All right. Sweet. One, two, three. Four. No. Okay. Well, there he is. Let's go. A re raise and an all in, and it was a straight board. Oh, it was a straight on the board. Well, not straight on the board, but there. Yeah. I know. We get I mean, the thing oh, is, the pen. Uh, let's go. go. We're at the second break of day one of the World Poker Tour event at the Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. Um, in my first bullet, I lost literally every hand I played. I made multiple sets and they all lost. I was asked to talk about running bad. And I think a lot of people don't quite understand exactly what running bad even means. Most people think, oh man, I lost four tournaments in a row. I'm running so bad. Or, oh, I'm down 10 binds in cash games. That's bad. But something I learned from Irie Guy, Craig Hartman, a long time ago, was that you will run worse than you could possibly imagine. You can and you will if you play enough. And that is very true. I've had multiple 100 buy and down swings and I've always come out of them, but that's just part of the game. Actually ask yourself, would you be okay losing 100 buy-ins? That is normal. As long as you are confident in your abilities because you have a long track record of success, you are always working hard, studying, and playing your best at the table, things will work out in, in the long run and you'll understand that the short-term results do not matter at all. Oh boy, what a day. So, my first bullet, I lost pretty much every hand. It was not fun, but it was a slow bleed down. I um, you know, lost 50 big blinds about four or five times with full houses and straights and flushes and whatnot. That happens. Um, I buy in for the second time. I double up on the first hand. I get 10-9 of hearts facing a limp, a raise. I call the button. 
limper calls, it comes 1098, two spades. It checked to me, I bet 2,000 into about a 3,300 pot. Both players call. Turns a seven of spades, not what I want. Goes check, check, check. Rivers a 10, it's exactly what I want. I have the nuts. Cle clearly the nuts are what you need here. Um, they checked to me, I go all in for 20K. One of the guy pays and I double up to like 50, 55,000. He had a little bit less than me. Um, I hung out for a level. Then the next level, first hand back from break. Tightish, straightforwardish guy raises under the gun to 900 at 150, 300. Someone calls second position. I call third position with pocket threes. Everybody else folds. It comes 622. Two. They check to me. I bet 2,000 into about 3,500, which I think is fine. Maybe I could go even smaller. I definitely think I need to bet there. I do think we're going to be against lots of random overcards. So I uh, bet the initial better check min raises me. Oh, I bet 2,300. He made it 5,000. Not liking this at all. I have to put in 27 to try to win a pot that's going to be 13, 13, five. So do we have 20% equity? I don't know. I did think though, if I got a set, I would get paid. So I decided to call. I thought he may decide to do this with random hands like Ace King sometimes to find out where he stands. He seemed like that type of player. Uh, turns to three, so I get a boat. Six, two, two, three. He checks, I bet 7,000. He makes it 15,000. Now I'm like, oh my God, does he really have sixes or twos? The thing is, is I have witnessed some ridiculous hands. This guy just got it all in for about 300 big blinds with pocket queens pre-flop against another guy's ace jack. People clearly are overvaluing stuff left and right in this tournament. Um, so I decided to call to induce bluffs. I definitely didn't want to shove and let him fold out aces or something like that. Rivers the nine, he went all in. I called, he did have the sixes. So just like that, I'm out twice. Um, we were already... Have, We've already played five levels today. So I decided to not re-enter. I'm gonna re-enter again tomorrow on day 1B. I could go buy in again now with 100 big blinds, which is a lot, but I think the right play is to just wait for tomorrow where I can buy in again for, I don't even know how many big blinds, 300 big blinds. I think that will, it will probably just be higher EV. Also, you don't really want to make it through the day with a starting stack if you have the opportunity to just be patient and re-enter. So, like if my goal was to just win the tournament, I think I should probably re-enter. But the goal is to maximize expectation and win the most money possible. So I'm gonna be a good boy and just play tomorrow. I'm gonna go have some dinner, I'm gonna relax, and then try it again. It could not have been much worse than today. <laughs> Let's try this again. Day 1B, here we go. Table 26. Let's make it happen. No, table 25. Good morning. Table today? Yes, we're good to go. Good. Thank you. 15. 22. So we'll be right in there. Hello, Three, so four, three, five. Good morning. Have fun today. Here we are. Table 25. C6. Let's go. Tony does has a few fascinating things to say. Tony! Okay, thank you, Vince. Additionally, the World Poker Tour would like to thank Kent McLaren and Kevin Quintanilla of Protection Poker for providing us with the action clock. The action clock will be implemented one table away from the money bubble in this tournament. The World Poker Tour would also like to thank its great sponsors, including Dr. Pepper, the official soft drink of the World Poker Tour, Jet Smarter, the official private jet partner of the World Poker Tour, Cubo, the official watch and secret timekeeper of the World Poker Tour, Fade and Spade, the preferred playing cards of the World Poker Tour, and Rockstar, the official energy drink of the World Poker Tour. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for supporting World Poker Tour. Let's do what we always do. Have some fun, and let's shuffle up a deal! Yeah. Woo! Look at these two characters. We are currently on dinner break. So far, this tournament has gone about as poorly for me as possible. I'm on bullet number four. We lost the second bullet when um, I had queen eight. Someone raised, someone called, someone called. I called big blind with queen eight suited. Comes queen, four, two. I have top pair, bad kicker, backdoor flush draw. Checks to a guy, he bets, I call. Turns an eight, so I have two pair. I check, he bets, I go all in for, you know, a pretty good amount, but not a huge amount. He has a set, so I'm out. First hand of the fourth bullet, I had six five of clubs and raised under the gun. 
which is a little bit loose, but probably fine. I don't raise it all the time, but you know, we only live once. Um, I got two callers. It came ace, queen, three, two clubs. So I have a flush draw. Um, I continuation bat. Two people call, including the player in the big blind. Turn is a seven off suit. So now I have a gut shot and the flush draw. If I didn't get the gut shot, I would definitely just check. But with the gut shot, I think I need to keep barreling. So I bet um, 6,000 into about a 12,000 pot. Probably looking to jam the river for my last 20K or so, if I miss. Um, only the big blind called. River is a five, so now I have a pair. And I kind of got the vibe that the opponent was somewhat draw heavy on the turn. I, I know I have two clubs, but I don't block any of the good clubs. So I thought the five gave me some showdown value, which it doesn't always. And this is certainly a spot where I would want to jam my best hands on the river. So I need to have some bluffs, but I think I do have some unpaired clubs, like all the other um, suited connected ones to jam the river. So I decided to not shove. And he had nine, seven of clubs. So he turned a pair to go with his flush draw and obviously would have folded if I shoved the river. So in that hand, I first off had to open the hand. Then I had to um, turn a gut shot to keep bluffing. And then I had to river a pair to not bluff. So really, lots of things had to go poorly. So anyway, now we are nearing the end of the re-entry period. I have a nice 40 big blind stack. <sighs> Here we go. Um, if I end up busting sometime soon, I may not re-enter, depending on how soon it is. Mainly just because they have a $25,000 tournament tomorrow that should be quite good. And clearly you're equity in a $25,000 tournament buying in on time with a lot of other people who have busted the main event multiple times. It's probably gonna be higher EV than buying in right at the end of the re-entry period for this tournament. So that's gonna be the plan most likely, but we'll see how it goes. I feel like I should say something about running poorly, but at the end of the day, really, we're down like, what, four or five buy-ins, or five, five buy 5.5 buy-ins on this trip, and that's just fine. People keep commenting about how I'm running bad, but I think it's just normal. You're gonna be losing most tournaments you play. If you get upset, anytime you go on any losing streak at all, it's certainly not gonna go well for you. So all you can do is remain sane, stay happy, and play your best. Well, I busted for the fourth time. I found a nice cold four bet all in spot. A loose aggressive cutoff opened, loose aggressive button three bet for like the fifth time in about two orbits. And I found jack 10 and diamonds. So it went 2,000, 5,000. Two raise to two, oh, I'm sorry, raise to 1,600, raise to 5,000. Then I had 19,000 in the small blind with jack 10 and diamonds. And it's kind of close. I thought it was gonna get called a lot, but at the same time, jack 10 and diamonds usually has some amount of equity. Anyway, I shoved, cut off folded, big blind, I'm sorry, a button snap called me. I'm like, oh no. But um, he had pocket eights, so we had a fair fight and I cannot win a fair fight to save my life. Currently like over eight and flips on this trip, but hey, that's okay. I came back to the room to try to get in my room. The room keys don't work again for the third time now. So I'm standing outside like a jerk and um, waiting for the person to bring more room keys. Clearly, everyone's trying to tell me, I'm not welcome here, go home. But I'm hard-headed. Tomorrow's a $25,000 tournament, so I'm gonna hop in that and um, try to make it happen. I was asked to talk about bankroll management. What I think a lot of people don't understand or comprehend is that your there's not just like a number of buy-ins you need to play a game. It depends on a few things. First, how big of an edge do you have? If you have no edge or a negative edge because you're a loser, well, you need an infinite bankroll because you're gonna lose all your money, right? You're just, you're never gonna win. Um, if you have a tiny, tiny edge, you need a gigantic bankroll. And if you have a huge edge, you need a much smaller bankroll. Next, how much variance is in the game? You need a way bigger bankroll to play 10,000 person tournaments compared to 10 person tournaments because you don't win a 10,000 person tournament very often. Or if you're playing like PLO, there's way higher variance than PLO than No Limit Hold'em. Um, next, you have to figure out how fine are you losing your whole bankroll. If you want to take more risk, you need a smaller bankroll. So, it's not as simple as 100 buy-ins for tournament and 30 buy-ins for cash games. Thinking like that is not a good way to go about it. Oh, 
well. I lost the 25k. I grinded up a nice stack during the um, deep stack level of the tournament. And then once the shallow stack portion arrived, I lost three out of three all ins. I actually found myself in a tough spot where, I say it's a tough spot. Um, I raised to 2.5 big blinds, folds around to big blind, who shoved for 17. I had king queen. And this is a spot where in the past I'm just calling every time. And it certainly is a close spot. The, usually the determining factors in this situation are, have I been opening a lot, which I have, I have been. And has the big blind been shoving a lot as a shallow stack? And this was his third shove in about three orbits. So I'm opening a lot and he's shoving a lot, therefore I should call a lot. But um, a lot of time in these tournaments, you definitely want to avoid neutral-ish calls. Uh, clearly the call is like slightly positive or slightly negative one way or the other. But um, I think it's probably at least a consideration to fold. Um, if, if you're close to the money, maybe you should fold. If the tournament's soft, which this one was really soft, maybe you should fold. I called though and I lost to ace-king. Now I lost two flips. So I have yet to win an all-in at this tournament series. And hey, that's okay. Um, now I'm playing the $5,000 tournament. It's a one-day event. After this is a $2,000 tournament today, also a one-day event, and then I'm going home. So by the end of the day, either we're gonna have all the money or we're not. I say all the money. We have to win the tournament to get even. Um, I say even, even for the trip, even for life, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I'm just gonna go continue playing my best. This is a pretty sweet area, right? Look, we're playing in an arena. Wouldn't it be cool if poker could get its act together and have card readers on every table, have us in a glass enclosure, and have all of these seats full of people watching, uh, maybe betting on our, on our um, games. That would be a lot of fun. Maybe one day we'll see that. Um, probably not anytime soon, but maybe one day. Hello. I'm in the business center of the Delta Lounge because I lost my game again. 5K, nothing went right. The story of the trip. We played eight tournaments and um, I lost every one and I didn't get a whole lot going in any, any of them besides the 25K, which I guess is the one you want to get something going in. And even in that one, it didn't work out. So 0 for 8, sometimes it happens. I posted about it on the internet and a lot of people acted like, oh my God, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. That's horrible, but go for it happens all the time. So uh, I feel like I played well. I implemented a lot of things that I've learned studying recently and all in all, I'm, I'm happy with the play. I just lost literally every all in. When you lose literally every all in, you're gonna lose. And uh, that's what happened this time. My next trip's probably gonna be to the World Poker Tour Championship or Tournament of Champions, whatever they call it, in May at Aria. So. I'll talk to you then. Also, make sure you check out my daily videos, Little Poker Advice. If you like it, let me know. They take some time, but I'm happy to do them for you. Okay, friends. Hi. 